Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Um, today we're gonna do part two of cutting out the silhouettes. Um, I always try and make my hole somewhere where I can turn the cutout into a pair of earrings. Um, whatever that is, the turtle. Uh, we have an octopus coming up. I don't, still gotta work on that one. Um, but, so we're gonna do, we're gonna pierce and cut this guy. I already started with the hole, um, but I'll go through that process again. Um, so our Mod Podge is all nice and dry, everything's stuck. Um, we're about a day or two later. Um, it doesn't take that long, but it um, it's dry right now. So I'm gonna take you down to the anvil and show you what I've done. So what I've done is I always take and put my hole where I want my uh, let's see if I can zoom this in here a little bit. Put my hole down a little bit so that it gives me room to cut out to the top. Already done that it doesn't take very many taps the next thing is I have this little uh, collar bit or chuck it lets me use these really tiny bits um, this is the second biggest one um, it's a number 62 uh, I broke the other one so I just keep working my way down um, but this is a 332nd shank. It goes right in my my small uh, Dremel and also I have a 332nd shank for my flex shaft uh, style Dremel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to drill down through there and here we go. I'm just putting a little bit of wax on it. I'm going to up our speed a little bit, take it up to a five. And this bit is kind of old, so I'm kind of just taking whatever it's got. And we're through. Sometimes we can drop this. So now we have a little hole. Next, I'm going to take this is just a cheap uh, jeweler saw I got off eBay. I think I got it and the blades for like six or eight bucks. This is a number one, um, one oct bit, just a generic. Doesn't even have a name on it off eBay. Um, this one here goes up to six aught. Five, four, three, two, and one. 
Um, I actually am probably, for this guy, going to go with a three. Three out. And the blade direction. And we're going to take and put um, the blade through the hole with the bird pattern or with the pattern up. So we'll put this right through the hole. Tighten that in. I'm pushing in a little bit. So my blade's nice and snug. Now here we are ready to start. All right. So here's my beeswax. I'm gonna use that periodically to lube up the blade. I'm gonna start I'm actually not going to go straight up. I'm going to start out towards the beak. That way whenever I go to uh, make this an earring, I have nice solid uh, bowl up front or metal up, up top. Put my blade on backwards. I did. Felt right. Let's try this again. It doesn't cut very well if you put it on there backwards. There we go. All right. Now let's lube this up. I normally use a little paintbrush, just a dry paintbrush kind of wipe off so I can see where I'm going. Make sure my line's going right. did not go the way I wanted it to. So I generally try and stay right on my line, but for some reason the blade twisted on me. Part. We can clean up the bill after. We'll start here.
it's just light pressure. next little turn so I'm just barely gonna push enough forward to get the blades to come in. so now we get into some tricky stuff we got a couple little feathers that we need to indent here. And remember that the pattern is just, just that, it's a pattern. Every piece is different. So take some liberties with it and just kind of let let things work the way that they're going to work. Some of this fine detail stuff down here, some pieces I have to have those dents in there, and then some we can add in later by using our Dremel tool. Just roughly making those little lips. And we can clean those up after with the uh, with the Dremel. side. If your blade gets kinked and it won't move, just let it kind of, just let some pressure up on it and it will go back to where it wants to be. The spoon is cutting really nice, doesn't take a lot of pressure. to the wing. With a little bit more wax so we can make our turn. So on our wing there is some of these little ridges again. We're gonna finish those up in after we get the pattern off but for now we're just gonna make little indentions for it. There's just the little little wing edges. So turn my blade a little bit. Turn my blade a little bit. I can't see. a little bigger.
technique is nowhere near perfect or anywhere close. I'm just now getting to where I'm not breaking a lot of blades. And it's just feeling the blades cutting, feeling the teeth cutting in and getting the blade to face the right direction. for the turn. And I'm kind of putting back pressure on it, like I'm pulling back towards myself when I'm doing this, just so that just the teeth are cutting. I don't want any force on it. All right, now I'm gonna go forward. in there. We'll bring the wing tip out just a little bit farther because I want to. And you can kind of feel whenever it needs the wax. Pushing too hard. All right, so let me zoom me out here a little bit. If I had a um, a ex extendable or an adjustable uh, saw, I could take and um, use that piece that just broke the long piece. and keep using that piece of the blade. Let's see if I get this one on right. Yep, so we've got our bird cut out for the most part. I need to get this back in the hole right there. With the blade going the right direction. Nice new fresh blade, same size. Anytime you switch blades, you need to uh, remember that it's a brand new blade. It's going to cut a lot faster. enough room for that eye, for that hole. When I get towards the end, I come right up here to my V. So it's closer, has more support. All right, so that's pieces cut out. 
And because my saw took a turn right at the beginning, my bird doesn't really have a beak. But there's a little tiny one there, so we'll see what we can do with it still. Um, we'll let that go. So what we're left with is our silhouette. I'm going to take and just start kind of rubbing the bottom off here. And this is the Mod Podge we're taking off right now, the glue. Once you get up to the paper, you can kind of see that it's just coming up like plastic. This peels right off. Sometimes you'll have a little residue on the back, but we don't. There's our bird. So what we're going to do is take our Dremel. And I'm using the point, real sharp point that goes thicker, diamond bit. And down here at the tail, I'm going to put in those little dimples that we've made little marks for. And then the same thing on the wings. There's some little dimples there. I want to highlight those dimples. So I got those put in there a little bit better. And we'll work on the beak. We'll work on it from the back side, just because if it slips off, you have a little bit more control. See, this is the smallest piece I have. down a little lower. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see it too well, but there's the saw marks. I'm just going to take and clean those off. So the inside looks nice and clean. Now we're going to take off, there's little burrs on here, so what we're going to do is real carefully come about 45 degrees or so of an angle, just taking off that edge, it's just a sharp lip from cutting.
So whenever you rub your finger across it, it should be pretty smooth. It shouldn't catch you at all. Okay, so that feels good. Now we gotta do the back side, same thing. About 45 degrees. Hands cramping. So as you're doing this, it's always, always good to keep going through, just always feel it. This one's just going to be a silhouette. It's not going to have a brass back, so you want to make sure that it's really smooth. Feels pretty good. All right. What we're gonna do now is switch this over to our sanding disc or drum. And for this, I'm using um, 240 grit. Turn this down nice and low, probably about a two. And I'm just gonna go across the back side first. Just taking off any of those edges, smoothing it out. Any of these corners, like, the, like where the wings are, that guy right there. I want to try and take those down a little bit so they're not so sharp. Now the back's really nice and smooth. On the front, you need to be careful so you don't slide off. You don't want big marks up front. Otherwise you have to come up with a way to hide them or to kind of work them in somehow. Morning, honey. just a little bit sharp. Okay, so those do not want to come off. So, switching to a bigger diamond bit. And this is just to knock down those those burrs. So this is a little bigger bit. We're gonna keep it slow. And I'm just gonna do, just taking these points off. And now I'm not catching myself on them. All right. So besides my little 
glance off right there. This piece is pretty much done. What I'll do now is try and get that etch out of there because it was real light. Goes there. I'm gonna go to my disc sander. This is a 600 grit. Turn it up to about six. <coughs> I always like to work backwards when I'm trying to take out marks. You don't want to make a mark deeper than what you got. That was 400. Here's 320. Sometimes you need to change your direction too. And I'm trying to incorporate the rest of the spoon area near it. That way it is um, blended. So that's not too bad. I'm going to switch back up to my 600 and we'll go over the top of the whole, whole surface. This is also going to help take down any residual burrs or sharp spots that are on your cutout. You can do the back if you want to. I'll generally save the back for the buffer. But like I said, this works good for getting those little sharp areas that might be left over. And I've already pre-stamped this one with our logo. Um, just have to sign it for the date. Yes, please. And my smallest ball bit. Let's see if I can get that to focus in here. And it is, what month is this? Eight? Uh, 818. So I'm going to turn this down to about a 1 or 2. Let's take it to a 2. I'm going to go. disc. This is my uh, black um, brush. It's just the yellow one I got from Lowe's. Red here and white here. So just real quick I'm going to go over the back of it and then we'll start here with the red and then go to the white. And I normally will wear my mask 
And I always have my glasses on and we'll start. Wipe off the black. Alright, now on to the red. So we're pretty shiny there. Let's go up to the next level. White. hummingbird put a little jump ring on it And voila, there we go. And we got it signed. There we go, 818 and our logo. All right, I hope everyone has a great day. Um, have fun with these, experiment. Remember everyone's different and you don't have to stick to a set pattern. You can do your own drawings. Just the options are unlimited, but there you go. Hope everyone has a great day and make sure you like and subscribe here's where you can subscribe to our channel and over here's one of our other videos all right have a good day everyone <laughs>